Out of the fog, out of the night, and into his American adventures comes Bulldog Drummond. to tell us about our newest adventure, here is Bulldog Drummond. Before I begin, I'd like to ask a question. When you see a sign on the road that says, Danger Ahead, do you go on regardless of the danger or proceed with care and caution? I ask this because there's a big sign on the economic road ahead of us, and it says, Inflation. That means we must proceed with care and caution to keep prices down. More and more people are making more money than ever before, and there are fewer things to spend it on. Therefore, if we outbid each other for what there is, we force prices up, the value of money decreases, and everybody suffers. But you can, you must, keep prices down. Buy only what you really need, and refuse to pay more than ceiling prices. Save. Save all the money you can in the form of war bonds. Do all you can to avoid the pitfalls of that danger sign that says inflation. And make every step you take a step closer to victory. Keep prices down. <laughs> And now for the story I call Dinner of Death. It began when two men were arrested for hijacking trucks. They were known as Barnaby Mullins and Spike Saunders. Mullins, who was released on bail, visited the office of the district attorney. Look, Mr. Mahoney, one of your assistants let me get this far, right into your private office. Will you listen to me for a couple of minutes? I'm too busy, Mullins. In court next week, I'll give you all the time you need, you and your pal Spike Saunders. Tell me something. How did you know where to pick me up? The police have ways of knowing things like that. What happened? Did Tommy Pepper turn stool pigeon? Cut it, Mullins. You're doing Tommy Pepper an injustice. He's a good newspaper man, a crime reporter who hates rackets and loves to show them up. Of course, I shouldn't talk that way about the celebrated racket buster, Tommy Pepper. Not the day before a big banquet in his honor. Will you make in the main speech of the evening? Is that all you came here to say? That's some of it. Is there anything special you'd like to hear? Yes, there is. I'd like a full confession from you. It would save the state needless trial expense. Confession? Look, Mullins, I'm making no deals with you or with anyone else. Confess or get out of here and take your chances in court. Okay. But before I start to talk, will you do me one favor? Name it. I got a few little business details to clean up before I start living on the state. Will you fix it to continue my bail for 48 hours? All right, Barnaby. You can have until the day after tomorrow at 9 a.m. Now, suppose you start talking. This is insufferable. Oh, come now, Denny. You've been moaning all the way to this hotel. What in the world is the matter with you? Well, if you must know, Captain Drummond, it's my feet. We've been tramping about all day and now a banquet. I've been hoping to rest this evening, sir. Denny, this banquet is the event of the season. As visitors to the city, we're extremely fortunate to be invited. Yes, I understand that, sir. But 
with my feet. Oh, come on, forget your feet. I'm interested in the fabulous Tommy Pepper and his work in exposing rackets. I've always wanted to meet him again. Why, well, I wasn't aware that you even knew him, sir. Well, I don't really, but watch it, Denny. Here he is. Hello. Captain Drummond, right? Yes, Mr. Pepper. We met some years ago. Uh, don't tell I... me. I'll get it. Uh, at the Black Friars Club, 1938, right? Right again. You have a remarkable memory. Oh, I never forget a face. <laughs> I don't dare. It might be a guy just out of prison who would spend ten years remembering I sent him there. <laughs> well, sorry. I can't oblige you there. Oh, uh, pardon me. Uh, Tommy Pepper, this is Denny. Hiya, Denny. Uh, very well, thank you, sir. Well, gentlemen, before we brave the mob in a banquet hall, how about the special private room? There are some hors d'oeuvres and a row of bottles. Will you join me? Well, thank you, Mr. Pepper. Shorten that to Tommy, will you? Good heavens, sir. There's a weird-looking chap following us, an enormous, hulking fellow. <laughs> yes, Denny, that's Dodo. And he is following us, or rather me. That's his job. Dodo? Is that his name? Sure. Uh, Dodo, come here. Oh, yeah. Dodo, meet some friends of mine, Captain Drummond and Denny. Friends? Yes, Dodo. Friends. Oh. Hello. Hello there. All right, Dodo. Stay close behind us. You said that Dodo's job was following you, Mr. Pepper? Yeah, that's right. He's not much to look at or talk to, but he's aces as a bodyguard. To date, I owe him eight lives. My word, is there that much risk in writing about rackets? Constantly. And monotonously. Even tonight, some thoughtful soul telephoned me to say I'd die before the evening was finished. Hmm. Oh, here we are. And there's our distinguished D.A. studying his speech. Hiya, Mahoney. Hello, Tommy. Well, hello, Captain Drummond and Denny. Nice of you to come to the banquet. We're very glad to be here. How about a preview of your speech, Mahoney? It'll save me from blushing when I hear it. Not a chance, Tommy. The speech goes back in the pocket. I'm not going to spoil a surprise. Oh, now I know I need a drink. How do you have, Denny? Bourbon for me, Drummond. Oh, dry sherry, please. Dry sherry, sir. You, Denny? Uh, the same, sir. There you are. You, Mr. Mahoney? Kimmel, right, Mahoney? Right. A pony of Kimmel. You never forget anything, do you, Tommy? <laughs> well, allow me. To tonight's guest of honor, Tommy Pepper. May you prosper. Thanks, Drummond. Here's how. <sighs> that bourbon hits the spot. Well, let's get on to the banquet, but, shall we? Yeah. What's the matter with Mahoney? Uh, Mahoney, what's wrong? I, uh, I don't know. I... <laughs> Good heavens, he's fainted. Mahoney. Uh, Mahoney. Drummond, we got to do something. My word, sir. Now, Mr. Pepper has fallen too right across the body of the district attorney. Help me lift him, Denny. A barman. Don't let anyone touch those glasses. story continues in just a moment. And now, back to Bulldog Drummond and the story he called Dinner of Death. A hijacker known as Barnaby Mullins traded information with District Attorney Mahoney for 48 hours of freedom to clean up some unfinished business. The same night, Tommy Pepper, noted crime reporter, is to be guest of honor at a dinner. But after taking a drink, Tommy and the District Attorney collapsed. Keep up the first aid treatment, Denny. An ambulance will be here any moment. Yes, sir. Mr. Pepper! Mr. Pepper! He's coming too, Captain Drummond. Good. I can't say as much for Mahoney. No, sir. He is in bad shape. Wait, wait a moment, Barman. No. No, it's no use. What do you mean? There's no pulse, no breath. His heart stopped. The district attorney's dead. Oh. Mr. Pepper's going to be all right, sir. Tommy. Tommy Pepper, can you hear me? Drummond, what happened? Someone must have poisoned your drinks. Lie still now. In a moment, we'll put you in an ambulance and take you to the hospital. But Mahoney... I saw him fall. Where is he? He's dead. Only dead. Oh, that's terrible. Who did it, Tommy? Do you know? Might have been Barnaby Mullins or anybody. Lots of rats hated me and Mahoney. 
Tell me, who is Barnaby Mullins, and why do you suspect him? Well, it was Mullins on the phone today. He threatened me. I investigated his hijacking racket. Mahoney was to prosecute him next week. I take it then he's out on bail. Where can I find him? Well, he used to hide out at Cornwall Arms, apartment 4E. Thanks. Denny and I will go there at once. Be careful. Mullins is tricky, dangerous, and desperate. Yes, sir. Apartment 40. Skeleton key, sir? Try the door first. Why, it was unlocked. All right, inside. You better be prepared. Mr. Pepper said this Mullins person was a desperado. Good heavens, look. It's the ape man. Hello, Dodo. Whoa. Dodo, is Barnaby Mullins here? Mullins in other room. You don't see. In the other room. Thanks. This way, Denny. This is fantastic, sir. Why is that creature here in the apartment of the man suspected of poisoning his master? Open the door, Denny. This is a light switch. Well, that must have been Barnaby Mullins. Hanged by the neck from an overhead pipe. Oh, dear. Hanged with his own belt, sir. Dodo! He's gone, sir. That explains that Dodo hanged Mullins for poisoning Tommy Pepper. I doubt that, Denny. Dodo would have strangled Mullins and noticed the evidence here, that chair lying on the floor. Oh, I see it now, sir. It was suicide. Mullins hanged himself. Now, a closer inspection will show a flaw in that theory. How high would the seat of the chair be from the floor if the chair were upright? Oh, I, uh, about two feet, sir. Uh, now, look at the body. How high off the floor are the feet? The feet? Well, the toes are about three and a half feet from the floor. Mm -hmm. Then it would have been physically impossible for Mullins to have hanged himself. Well, are you telephoning, sir? Police headquarters, Denny. Oh, 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 yes. Hello, police headquarters. This is Captain Drummond. Yes, I've just found Barnaby Mullins murdered in apartment 4E at the Cornwall Arms. That's right. I... What? I see. Well, thanks, I will. But please, sir, you gave the police some information and apparently they gave you some. They did, Denny. Mullins' partner, a person named Spike Saunders, shot his way out of jail three hours ago. He killed a guard. Let's be going. Going, sir? Where? To the hospital to see Tommy Pepper. If Spike Saunders is on the rampage, we must cover every angle. dislike to press a personal issue, sir, but my feet are killing me. Yes, Denny, I know how you feel. I'm sorry we couldn't find a taxi cab to bring us here to the hospital. But it's impossible that this Spike Saunders would invade a place like this, especially with the police on his heels. That shot seemed to come from Tommy Pepper's room. Hurry it up. Yes, sir. The running is extremely difficult at this point, sir. All right, here's the room. <laughs> oh, dear. Mr. Pepper isn't here. There's a terrace outside. Look out there. I'm all right, Drummond. Why, word. He's under the bed. Yes, but still alive. Tommy, who fired that shot? I don't know. I was dozing when I heard one of the French windows open. It squeaked. To me, that meant danger, so I dove under the bed. Anything outside, Denny? Yes, sir. Uh, this gun. Apparently, the assassin dropped it on the terrace as he ran away. Hmm. Another narrow escape for you, Tommy. I'm an old hand at narrow escapes, Drummond. That may be, but I think you need a change of venue. There have been two poisonings... Barnaby Mullins has been hanged, and Spike Saunders has shot his way out of jail. Well, thanks for catching me up on current events. So Saunders is on the loose, huh? With the murder of a guard hanging over him. Well, in that case, I think I'll move out of here. If you'll get me my clothes, Denny, they're in that closet over Yes, there. sir. Oh, I'll get them, Denny. Here, here we are. Shoes, socks, underwear. Uh, let me help you with that hospital nightgown, Mr. Pepper. Oh, thanks, Denny. Shirt, tie, trousers. I have them, sir. All right. Now, you can go along with Denny to our suite in the hotel. Meanwhile, I'll gather up the loose ends of the case. Here, here's your coat. Page. You're not coming to the hotel, sir? Not just now, Denny. There are a few details I want to clean up. Well, Drummond, thanks for your help. I'll see you soon, I hope. Yes, both of us will, sir. Hmm. Plaster on the wall is soft. And the bullet didn't go far. Should be easy to dig it out. 
<coughs> Peculiar angle of entrance. There we are. Oh, pardon me, sir. Why did you come back, Denny? Well, Mr. Pepper considered himself far too capable to need a chaperone on his way to the hotel. He insisted that I come back here. He went on alone, so I gave him my key. All right, we'll follow him in a few moments. Yes, sir. You see, I believe that Tommy Pepper will need not one chaperone, Denny, but two. Yes, sir. I'll switch on the lights. Well, we've had visitors. My word, the room is wrecked. Tommy? Tommy Pepper? He isn't here. He's been kidnapped, sir. From the look of the room, there was a fierce struggle before someone overpowered him and carried him off. Yes, it appears that way. Uh, please, sir, what do we do now? Uh, at the moment, I believe we'll both raise our hands high. Uh, raise our... What in the world are you talking about? There's a man at the door, Denny, with a gun. Good heavens, it's Dodo. Well, Tommy Pepper. That's what we'd like to know, Dodo. Tell me, well, Tommy Pepper. Oh, dear. Listen, Dodo, Mr. Pepper came here for safety, but someone must have kidnapped him. Well, Tommy Pepper. He doesn't believe me, sir. Now, see here, Mr. Dodo. Spike Saunders escaped from jail. Probably took Mr. Pepper away. Spike Saunders free. Spike Saunders snack. Tommy Pepper. Dodo gets Spike Saunders. Thank goodness he's putting away the gun. Dodo, can you find Saunders? Uh, Dodo followed Spike Saunders lots of times. He had an Call in a warehouse. We'll go along with you to help you. No, 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 need help. No, no, go along. Oh, oh. My word, sir, you knocked him out. Yes, Denny. Now you and I will visit the colony warehouse without a chaperone. glass and reached through and fixed the burglar alarm just as you told me. You should have been a burglar, Denny. Well, thank you, sir. I'll raise the window. Go on in. My word, the warehouse is full. Yes. I noticed the stencils on the cases, Denny. Hosiery, shoes, cigarettes, machine tools. Ten goods. My word, this must be the loot of those hijackers, Mullins and Saunders. Probably. Hold it. Get him up. No, oh dear. It's Tommy Pepper. Tommy, it's Drummond, Denny. Well, how'd you get here, Drummond? How'd you get in? Oh, there are ways and means, Tommy. Tell us about this warehouse. Oh, it's a storage depot for hijacked civilian goods. Nothing but the best, of course. If you'll stay with me, I think we can grab the other member of the hijacking team. Spike Saunders is coming in. My word, how do you know that? I've been watching through a window. He just drove up outside in another car. Not the one he was using when he yanked me out of your hotel suite. What happened to you there? Well, I just got in when Saunders arrived. He slugged me and started to take me for a ride. It was my good luck that his car blew a tire. I was conscious by that time, so I got away. You're lucky. You're telling me. I wouldn't be alive today if I wasn't. Uh, Drummond, got a gun? Not tonight. And lie low when the fireworks start. Saunders won't give up without a fight. Perhaps you'd better give me your gun, Tommy. Taking a criminal into custody is more in my line than yours. Oh, no, not tonight. I've been poisoned, shot at, and slugged, and I want revenge. Here he comes. Get him up, Saunders. Well, so what happens to me? I run into Tommy Pepper and into dark. That's right, Saunders, and my gun was up first, so walk in a straight line toward my flashlight and keep him up. Sure, let's see your light. <coughs> oh, well, my finger must have slipped. Uh, did it hurt you, Tommy? Nice shooting, Spike. He shot the flashlight out of my hand. Now it's my turn. <coughs> Oh, no, you got me, a rat. Right in the bread basket. All right, Tommy. 
You won your duel? Yeah, I almost lost it. All right, Drummond, you can have my gun from here in. It's your show. Thanks. It's my show until we get to police headquarters, where we'll book you for murder. What are you saying? Yes, sir. What are you saying? Well, Denny, you see, this cycle of poisoning and murder began just after Barnaby Mullins made a sworn statement to the district attorney. Well, I'm following you, sir. I merely want to get out my flashlight. I don't like this darkness. Yeah, that's better. Your real talent, Tommy, was blackmail. You used the information you picked up about rackets to extort money from crooks. Will you confirm that? Confirm that? Oh, Denny. Oh, I'm sorry, sir. He knocked the light out of my hand. Drummond, you were too fast with your information. Now you haven't got a light. Making an arrest in the dark is pretty tough. Where in the world is he, sir? You forget, Tommy. I've got your gun. You're unarmed. <laughs> One correction, Drummond. I just picked up Saunders' gun. He won't need it anymore. Hit the floor, Denny. Yes, sir. One other little point, Drummond. My gun has only one cartridge left in it. There were two. I used one on Saunders. You've got just one shot to fire. I've got plenty in this gun. Have you? Oh. I missed you, huh? Why don't you try the one shot you've got, Drummond? You might make a bullseye by a miracle. Please, sir. Is he bluffing? No, Denny. There's only one live cartridge left in his gun. In this gun, and Tommy's moving around in the dock. Back to the climax of our story in just a moment. Back to Bulldog Drummond. In the colony warehouse, a depot for hijacked civilian goods, Drummond and Denny are peering into darkness. Drummond has one live cartridge in his gun. Tommy Pepper has more. Come on, Drummond. Why don't you shoot? You might hit me. Of course, sir. It's none of my business. But do you think you might hit him? As he said, Denny, I might score a bullseye by a miracle. I'm saving this last shot. But what can we do, sir? I think you'd better start creeping. Creeping, sir? My feet are aching terribly. Crawl, Denny, on your hands and knees while I talk to Tommy. You'll know where he is by his voice. Do you want me to find him, sir, and tackle him? No, no. Get behind him. Those wooden cases are stacked high. Get behind a row of them. Oh, I understand. Get behind a row of cases and behind him. That's it. Get moving now. I'll make him talk so you can locate him in the dock. And there's a mighty heave-ho on the cases. Yes, I'll do my best, sir. All right, Tommy. How about it? Tommy? Yeah, Drummond? You ready to surrender? Not yet. You've committed three murders. I don't intend to make a fourth at your little game. Tell me something, Drummond. How did you know that I murdered Mullins? I was in the hospital when you found him. You hanged him before you poisoned the bottle of Kimmel for Mahoney. And then you faked your own poisoning... And in the hospital, you fired a shot from your own gun into the wall. You're quite intelligent, Drummond. How did you figure it out? With your help, Tommy. I didn't help you. At the hospital, I got your clothes for you. The district attorney's speech was in your coat pocket. The speech you stole from him when you fell across him in the private room. It makes very interesting reading. Keep talking, Drummond. Gladly. From what Mullins told him, the D.A. knew the truth. He would have exposed you in his speech at the banquet. All right, Drummond, now I know just where you are. That's all I wanted Heave to know. Oh, oh, oh. I did it, sir. He's pinned underneath those heavy cases, and I'm watching him very closely. A nice piece of work, Denny. You deserve a rich reward. Well, in that case, sir, there's something I'd like very much. Let's go home where I can take off my shoes. <laughs> Now, here is Bulldog Drummond to tell us about next week's story. At a carnival, a gypsy fortune teller predicts Denny's future. She foretells a night of dire happenings. And before morning, her prophecy comes true. 
Denny and I meet some interesting people. A sideshow ticket taker, a famous performer on the high trapeze, and two corpses which refuse to lie still. A mad killer lurks in the background. I call the story Murder Carnival. Be sure to listen, won't you? And so, into the night, walks Bulldog Drummond, seeking new adventure and excitement. The next adventure with Bulldog Drummond will be heard over most of these stations next week at the same time. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.